Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to introduce a new group of identities called the double angle formulas. So let's go ahead and take a look at these for a second. We have that sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. Cosine of 2x is cosine squared x minus sine squared x or 1 minus 2 sine squared x or 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Now this cosine 2x, we have three different forms of this formula and really they're all equivalent, we'll see in a second, uh, but some of them will come in useful at different times and that's why we have these uh, written out here. And tangent of 2x is 2 tangent x over 1 minus tangent squared x. Now really these double angle formulas are just a very special case of our addition formulas that we learned in the last section. So if we look at sine of 2x, we really could just write this as sine of x plus x. And recall that the addition formula for sine then would be sine of x cosine of x plus cosine of x sine of x. And really we have sine x cosine x sine x cosine x this is just 2 sine x cosine x. Right? Both of my terms here are, from the addition formula are exactly the same. The cosine double angle formula we get in a very similar way. Do we just use the cosine addition formula? Now remember the cosine addition formula would give us cosine x cosine x minus sine x sine x. So simplifying this out, I have cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Now the other two versions of this formula we can get just from simple introductions of Pythagorean identities. right? If I substitute in for my Pythagorean identity for cosine squared, this is 1 minus sine squared we know from my Pythagorean identity this is the same as cosine squared. We saw this minus sine squared and so we get 1 minus 2 sine squared. In a similar way starting from cosine squared minus sine squared if I substitute in for sine squared I get cosine squared minus 1 minus cosine squared because 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared from our Pythagorean identity. And this gives me a grand total of, I have minus minus, so this is plus 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. So these are our three different formulas for cosine of 2x. Now usually we'll just use cosine squared minus sine squared, but in some problems it's going to be more convenient to have everything in terms of sine or everything in terms of cosine, or maybe we have a 1 sitting around somewhere that we want to cancel out, so we'd use this one, or a negative 1 we want to cancel out, we'd use this one. Now for tangent, again we're just plugging directly into the tangent addition formula. Remember the tangent addition formula would give us tangent x plus tangent x on the top, and on the bottom we would get 1 minus tangent x times tangent x. And so we simply have 2 tangent x over 1 minus tangent x squared or tangent squared x. Okay, so this is how we get these double angle formulas. Again, they're just a very special case of the addition formulas that we're already familiar with but they pop up quite often in problems and let's take a look uh, see how we might use these. We'll do a little example here and the next video will be some more examples using these double angle formulas. Let's say we want to find sine 2x, cosine 2x, and tangent 2x given that sine x is 5 thirteenths and x is in quadrant 1. So the first thing we need to do is we know that our double angle formulas that I just took off all have cosines in them with the exception of that one case of cosine 2x. So if I want to find sine 2x, which we know is 2 sine x cosine x, I 
I need cosine x first. Now we have information about sine and we have information about the quadrant so we can set up a quick triangle over here for x sine is given as 5 thirteenths and this is our, we see this is our 5, 12, 13 triangle so my adjacent is going to be 12. If you don't see that right away just remember this is the square root of 13 squared minus 5 squared but this is one of those special triangles it's just like a 3, 4, 5 triangle we have lots of triangles in this proportion 5, 12, 13. Now we can continue on from here from this triangle I get that cosine of x is equal to 12 thirteenths and tangent of x is equal to 5 twelfths. So this is going to help me to figure out what all of these functions I need are. I have all the information now that I need to plug into my formulas. And we're in quadrant one so these are all positive values. We don't have to worry about any of the negatives here. So here sine 2x is going to be 2. My sine x is 5 thirteenths My cosine x we found to be 12 thirteenths. So this is going to give us, in my denominator, I have 169. And in my numerator, I have 2 times 5 is 10, times 12 is 120. All right. Let's take a look at cosine. Cosine, we can use any of the functions that we want or any of the formulas. Remember we have those three different formulas for cosine. I'm going to go ahead and use cosine squared minus sine squared. My cosine here is 12 thirteenths. My sine squared is 5 thirteenths squared. I oh, need that squared over on cosine too. So I'm going to have a common denominator between these two fractions of 169. And 12 squared is 144 minus 5 squared, which is 25. And so I get 119 over 169. Now tangent x, or tangent of 2x, we know from our formula this is 2 tangent of x. all over 1 minus tangent squared of x. And so plugging in, I'm going to have 2 times 5 twelfths all over 1 minus 5 twelfths squared. And we can go ahead and simplify that out to get the answer that we need. But before we do, I just wanted to point out, this is a bit complicated, isn't it? I mean, it's not super complicated, but we're going to have to do a bit of work to do this but there's a better way to find tangent if we already have sine and cosine. right? Anytime you need to find tangent alone, use this formula. If you ever have to find sine and cosine and tangent, well once you have sine and cosine, all you need to do is remember that tangent of 2x, this is going to be equal to sine of 2x over cosine of 2x. And we'll see this occur over and over again. We have all these formulas for tangent, and they're very useful in certain scenarios when we're looking for just tangent, and we have the information we need to find tangent. But if at any time we're finding sine, cosine, and tangent, it will always be simpler to find sine and cosine first, and then simply use this ratio to find tangent. So here, sine of 2x over cosine of 2x, well, that's 120 over 169 divided by 119 over 169. So my 169's cancel, or if we want to see this a little bit more explicitly, I'm dividing fractions. This is 120 over 169 times the reciprocal of my denominator, which is 169 over 119. So this is why I was saying before the 169's cancel, and we simply get 120 over 119. Now this is the same answer that we'll get from doing it this way, from continuing on from star. Uh, this is just a bit more tedious. We need to find common denominators in the numerator. And, well, actually, numerator is okay. The denominator will just resolve down to 6. 
we need to get a common denominator in the denominator of 144, get this uh, one here to match it, and then after all that work we're going to end up right here anyway. Okay, so this is just a, a bit quicker of a way to do it. All right. Now, in the next video, I'm going to do a few more examples with these double angle formulas before we move on to our next set of identities. We'll see you there.